So when you're done conducting your experiment, you're going to have a lot of data and you will need to evaluate your results. So this applies whether you're doing experimental or non-experimental research. What you're basically going to be looking for are called statistically significant differences in your data, or sometimes you're looking for significant similarities. But the whole idea here is you've taken these numbers that you've collected through observation and now you're applying special mathematical procedures to see if you actually have anything interesting here. So just a few important points. Uh, the word statistic just refers to a piece of numerical information that describes the, the data that it was produced from. And data is just factual information that we use for, you know, reasoning, discussion, and so on. So scientific research definitely involves collecting a lot of this kind of data. Quite often data sets in psychology will include well over 1,000 pieces of data. And we need to somehow, you know, make sense of all this stuff. And that's what statistics do. Statistics help us in four different ways. First of all, they help us to just organize this information into something that makes sense. They help us to summarize all this data into just a few simple statistics. And they help us to communicate our results to other people in a more efficient way. Like it's much easier to share just one or two numbers with somebody else than an entire data set. And it also just allows us to understand what's going on. You know, we aren't computers. We need to make things simple so that we can easily wrap our heads around it. So statistics definitely provide researchers with a way, like a standardized way to organize their data and share that data and just communicate with other researchers. So this, these are standardized procedures that are recognized throughout the scientific community. Whether you're a biologist, a physicist, uh, a astro astronomer, you know, whatever. No matter what kind of science you're doing, the statistics are the same. Statistics are statistics. There's nothing special about statistics in psychology. Unfortunately, however, statistics can mislead people. Uh, because remember, statistics, they're just numbers that represent data, and sometimes those numbers can be presented in a way that lead people down the wrong path, lead people to wrong conclusions. Like, oftentimes this is unintentional. Uh, the researcher just doesn't know how to do the statistics as well as they should, but sometimes it can be malicious. It can be intentional and they can intentionally try to mislead people. So he, the three basic ways that uh, statistics can be misleading are an oversimplification, like they've made, they've, they haven't represented all the data for some reason, or they are misrepresenting the data, like maybe they're just comparing things that shouldn't be compared or making numbers seem more similar than they actually are. Or one of the worst ways, and if you do this, you're going to be shunned by the entire scientific community, is to create data, to fabricate data, to just make it up. Like if you do that and you're caught, your scientific career is basically over. But most of the time, researchers who have gotten their training in statistics, they know what they're doing and they're going to be able to communicate those results fairly effectively. So st the statistical procedures I'm talking about, you can uh, you could think of the definition for statistical procedures as just these mathematical methods that are used to analyze or represent data. Uh, they come in two broad categories. You have descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. So descriptive statistics are statistics, you know, numbers, or sometimes charts that are used to simplify and describe data. So all kinds of data visualizations, every bar graph you've seen, pie graph, line chart, whatever, all that stuff that simplifies and describes the data so that you can more easily understand it, that's called descriptive statistics. And there's two basic kinds of st descriptive statistics that we tend to use. We tend to use measurements of central tendency, so that's a statistic that describes the central value of a set of numbers. 
it's like a single number that is meant to represent all of the numbers. It's like the most typical number. Uh, if you've ever f heard of you know mean or median or mode, those are the three major kinds of measurements of central tendency. I'm sure you've had to compute an average before, in measurement of central tendency. And th these different kinds of measurements are more appropriate for certain kinds of data. The, the other major kind of descriptive statistic would be a measurement of variability. So like a standard deviation, for example. This is just a measure to how spread out the scores are or how clumped together the scores are. Like, if, like uh, the, the measurements of central ten tendency, they tell you the, what the middle value is, but they don't tell you how grouped together all the other numbers are to that middle. That's what variability tells us. So it's important that you measure both central tendency and variability so that you have a really good idea about what that data looks like. The other kind of statistics, the inferential statistics, we use those to test hypotheses. So there's many different kinds of inferential statistics. Uh, we won't go into detail about any of them in this class, but the end result of doing any kind of inferential analysis is going to be what's called a p-value. Like you will get a number called a p-value. You could also call it a significance score. And this just shows you whether or not you found something. So traditionally, and this isn't just psychology, this is most sciences, traditionally, if you find a p-value that's less than 0 0.05, that means you have something interesting. If it's not less than 0 0.05, then that basically means your hypothesis has been falsified. Now, this whole idea of p is less than 0 0.05 might may seem arbitrary and abstract, but the whole idea here is we are basically saying that there is a 5% chance our results are wrong. Like, it's a convention, it's an arbitrary decision that we are going to only accept a 5% chance. It, it's totally arbitrary. Like, you could say, I'm only willing to accept a 1% chance. In that case, you should look for a p-value less than 0 0.01. Or maybe you're willing to accept a 10% chance. So now you're going to be looking for a p-value less than 0.1. But just generally, it's all about the p's that are less than 0 